This presentation is about looking at how timetabling can help include children who have different needs from perhaps the majority of the class within a school. Um, often if within the PMLD class, you may have one child who is perhaps more active or has different needs, um, including but not exclusively autistic spectrum disorder. And I'm interested in how we can support that child to, to be an integral part of the class whilst having their own individual needs met through clever timetabling. Hi, my name is Alison, Alison Pettit, and I wanted to chat with you today about autistic children within different classes, particularly within an SLD school, as that's my background. I've been working with autistic children, many of whom have had additional severe learning difficulties since the early 90s and I've worked within SLD schools and also within um, autism specific schools. I'm currently working as a specialist teacher going from school to school, which is a bit different for me. Um, I also had a lengthy time out of teaching where I have adopted and brought up to disabled children. Um, Timmy had found multiple learning difficulties and Chelsea, my daughter, has complex physical and other related issues. She's now doing really well at the age of 21 at National Star College. And my wife and I have now um, adopted a third child who's also got an interesting array of disabilities and is um, a constant um, teaching and learning for, for all of us. Um, when I first was a volunteer in special schools in the late 80s, I was attracted to the children who were either left in the corner because people didn't know quite what to do or were somehow bouncing off the walls within SLD schools. This was obviously a long time ago, but I think that some of the difficulties have gone round in a circle. Um, we now have um, autistic children in all settings um, and it's really interesting to see how we can help support them amongst the needs of children with other disabilities. I'm sure you can all think of individual children that you've worked with in the past or currently have in your class where their needs are somewhat different to the main body of the class. Um, I know that every child is unique and individual, but some children do need something rather different. So often this might be an autistic child within a, a group of, of PMLD children, perhaps, or it might, they might have other related conditions or difficulties, such as a short attention span being very, very active, or possibly having PICA, where it's, it becomes somewhat a safety issue to manage their needs alongside everybody else's within the classroom environment. So I wanted to talk to you about how I and my colleagues worked with a little girl who was not quite fitting in. Um, I've changed her name. I've called her Mia. She was an absolutely awesome little girl who was placed in a school for autistic children. And although autism was part of her makeup, she also had other complex difficulties that meant that her needs were rather different to the other children. So I worked with her within Key Stage 1 for two or three years and the class was reasonably compatible. They were all working around P2, P3. Um, uh, our little Mia was working at P1, P2. Um, but the, the difficulties really were that she her fleet, her attention span was so fleeting, um, more so than the other children, that, that she wasn't really at a stage of being able to sit at all. And her pika was big time. So she was picking up any items and managing to swallow them. Um, a surprising array of items could, could be consumed by this little girl. And she also had a thing about shoes and footwear. 
also within the class of children who didn't really understand who this person was or what was happening if she appeared at their feet she was liable to get booted um just because they didn't understand any different so we had some significant difficulties with safety for her and previously the um she'd spent a lot of time in the corridor which uh, i don't mind the corridor personally but i think it needs to be used as a planned thing and as a as if there's a good reason for her to be doing that and what is she doing there rather than just wandering around, which you don't like. I'm sure you don't either. So we needed to keep Mia safe. We needed to make sure that small items that other children were needing to use weren't accessible to her. We needed to make sure that she wasn't on the floor around everybody's feet because with the best will in the world, it, it was sometimes difficult not to trip on her and we needed to make sure that the other children could also access the things that they needed. We had to make a plan. So my colleagues and I decided to work on creating a bespoke timetable for Mia, but one that wove into the existing class one so that she was part of our class, but her own needs were met and those of the other children. So one of the bigger problems was how to manage the small world toys and construction toys that the other children needed access to. So we decided to buy large plastic boxes with lids so that the they, room could be set up but the lid on and once Mia had moved to an activity in the morning outside of class we could remove the lid um, and the children could access the toys and again, put the lid back on. Um, they were the ones that snapped shut so that um, when she returned to class that, that she was safe from those items. And um, we had a ginormous fiddle board made for her at her table and it, it bolted down to the table. It had lots of different options of attachers such as elastic straps and we were able to put different footwear on it at different times. So and also just strips of Velcro, which was one of her favourite things, so that we could encourage her to be at, at a place at the table for short periods, accessing the things that she loved best, which was footwear. So she wasn't ready really to sit, but she, would, she was encouraged to stand so that she could access these items without being down on the floor under people's feet. And this was a great step forward if you pardon the pun. So this is a not very flattering picture of that fiddle board. Um, it's, <laughs> it doesn't look anything special, but you can see that it has um, a, a little stolen foot sandal of, of one of my own children's wheelchairs that you could snap a, um, as a clip a, a shoe into. It's got a Wellington boot attached there. It's got some other pieces of Velcro and bits and pieces, locks and bolts and things that she could fiddle with. And, and it offered you the option of attaching other things. So you could take the boot off and add a different shoe or a sandal or whatever. So it was quite versatile. So we decided that we would break Mia's timetable into 15 minute slots right through the day. This, as I've said, interlocked with the, the main class timetable. So their timetable tended to be more, uh, there were 15 minutes, some 15 minute slots, but more like half an hour slots. Um, within a PMLD class, they might be longer because of the amount of time that you need to, to do transfers and so on. So anyway, for Mia, it was 15 minute slots right through the day and her one-to-one -one would, would be on a timetable. So one member of staff was always with Mia, but it wasn't always the same person. So they would have um, either half a morning or half an afternoon and it would, it would vary. And as the teacher, I would work with her for the periods when I, I wasn't required to leave the class. So... She was able to therefore access the things that were most important 
for her to be with the main class. We wanted her to be part of our class very much so. So we tried to look on the, our class timetable where best she fit, fitted in and, and slotted around that things that she could be doing outside of class. So she always did tack pack with us. That was twice a day. Communication, which was a, a snack session, she always did with us standing at her fiddleboard position. And messy play was a biggie because she loved it. And music, we, we incorporated Mia's timetable to include um, short periods of music. She wasn't hugely responsive, but it was something that we felt that she could learn to access over time. So in between those times in class, she had frequent movement breaks, sensory breaks, and times where she could concentrate better in a one-to-one -one environment out of class. I mentioned just before that messy play was a big one for Mia. Uh, Mia liked to just jump right into whatever was available mess-wise. So we decided to make this a, an afternoon event. So we would incorporate time for her to get changed after her uh, music session, which was early afternoon. She would have a quarter of an hour chunk to go and get changed. And she quite liked um, helping with getting changed and it was a, definitely an important skill for her. So she would go and put on an all-in-one um, type swimsuit. And then when she came back through, the, the the session would be ready which was a whole class session so if it was something like cornflower we would have um maybe a plastic paddling pool so that she could get right in with it or it might be a tough tray and if she sort of leant right over and rolled in it that that was okay for her to do so so it didn't matter how how uh, how messy she got she could she could enjoy a full body experience and then the the next step of the, of her 15 minute timetable was to then go and have a shower which she also got a lot out of it was almost like a full body um, water play session so she could enjoy that experience and we would sing body awareness songs whilst washing her down in the shower and then she would help with getting dressed which she particularly loved putting her own socks on and off. So I'm just going to show you a very brief version of the timetable that we'd made for Mia, and which is on the right there, and the timetable for the rest of the class, which is to the left. And you can see that she, she followed within reason what everybody else was doing, but times were spent in or out of class according to her need. One of the things that Mia needed was to have her dinner in a smaller, quieter environment, so she would go in early. But there was a couple of other children from class that needed that too, so she wasn't sitting eating all alone, but she was sitting eating with a small group in the dinner hall before the rest of school came in. So you can see that Mia's timetable does interlock with everybody else's, that she was given extra time to do things like personal care where the other children maybe didn't need that. And she was accessing lots of different spaces around school. If she was struggling on some days to walk so far, then obviously we would make adjustments and none of this was set in stone, but it, it meant that if she was out doing something somewhere else that the rest of the class would be ready for when she came back and I think that was a key point for us in that particular situation that when the time came for, for Mia to be due back in that we were ready with the next thing which worked very well because the, the rest of the class um, liked that structure and routine themselves. I'm aware that since I started making this PowerPoint that the NAC have produced um, an excellent document of guidance on the use of timetables for PMLD um, pupils and that maybe that means that this uh, little PowerPoint of mine may not be uh, of that much use now because they, they've done so much excellent work there. Um, I, 
I hope that it is still of some use to somebody. It's really all about individual needs and how to weave things together so that if you have a child who's operating at a different level to everybody else, that they're still very much part of your class, but, but they're getting their own needs met and so is everybody else. Uh, I've also used this technique in my new job where autistic children are being supported in mainstream school but have very different needs to their peers and how we can build them a bespoke timetable that allows them to be very much part of the class but also allows them to do things in, in a different way or in a different place some of the time. It really is about what's best for the individual and I think it particularly lends itself where children do struggle with unstructured time and they need a very tight timetable to help them move from one thing to the next to the next. I hope that you found it useful and um, that, that maybe you can look at the way that you're timetabling within your own setting. <laughs>